It would appear the sun has set on yet another corner of the British Empire. This one far down in the South Atlantic. Argentina today invaded and seized the Falkland Islands, which have been under British rule for nearly 150 years. Britain promptly broke diplomatic relations with Argentina, sent several of Her Majesty's warships steaming south, and appealed to the United Nations. It all seems like something out of the 18th century, but the British, and for that matter the Americans, are not amused. Most of Falkland's inhabitants are descendants of the British, who expelled Argentina from the islands 150 years ago. Argentina says the Falklanders surrendered today as meekly as the sheep they've been raising there for generations. It is not only the settling of an old score with the British, but seismic surveys have shown that the Falklands might be rich in offshore oil reserves. I grew up around Hong Kong and I always realized that they drove on the wrong side of the road. It brought me to realize that even as a former crown colony that they carry on certain British traditions. And this curiosity of the British Empire brought me to the southern tip of South America, the Falkland Islands, where sheep outpopulate people and penguins find ways to live on old land minefields. Anyways, I digress. My first impressions of the island was that it was very militarized. I landed in a military airport. I was not allowed to wear a hat. I'm pretty sure I wasn't even allowed to shoot this footage, but I did. I visited London a couple months before this trip, so I sort of know how British things can get. And let me tell you, man, this place is British. There's Union Jacks on garbage cans, Margaret Thatcher statues, even a street named after Margaret Thatcher with a confusing speed limit of nine and a half miles per hour. And that really truly is how fast paced this place is because not much goes on here. The next thing I did was to get on a plane and that's the mode of transportation here in between the smaller islands. And I was on my way to see some plane wreckages from the war. And on the way, I saw how barren this land is. And it looked quite desolate. And I can't fathom why a war was fought over this. Before this trip, I visited my friend Yuri in Buenos Aires, who's my friend that I met in London last year. It was then that he told me about the hasty relationship between Argentina and the UK. He told me about Argentina's politics in the 1980s, and that there were a series of military dictatorships up until 1982. The economy was struggling, and inflation was rampant. People that spoke out against the government were even kidnapped. With these issues in mind, Leopoldo Galtieri, the dictator at the time, decided to invade the Falklands. And in the name of getting back what's theirs, they invaded the Falklands. This is the Falklands Broadcasting Studio. Now, we've just had a call from um, Alistair Grieve. Um, Alistair, I understand that you've sighted some of the vehicles, have you? I had a quick look out through the curtains and all I could see was smoke, so I honestly haven't a clue what's happening, but uh, there's been some really heavy bangs, the whole place is shaking, it's, uh, it's a bit down to see the beast, there's a lot of machine gun fire and, and fairly small arms fire as well. Now, the, the situation as you might hear is that the radio station has now been um, taken over, um, we have three Argentine yeah. well, well, members. Uh, we have everything uh, recorded in two tapes. Yes. Okay. For the population. Well, uh, just a minute. If you, señor, un minuto. If you take the gun out of my back, I'm going to transmit it to you. If you take the gun away. I was thrilled, as an Argentine and as a professional soldier, I was thrilled to be taking part in the recovery of these islands that had been in British hands for so long. Uh, it made me very proud. The Malvinas are a national cause in Argentina. Pupils in primary school learn about their lost heritage, of how the British stole the islands from them in 1833. Youngsters are shown that the islands are part of Argentina's continental shelf. From a South American perspective, Britain's claim to the islands is absurd. Even an unpopular dictatorship would be acclaimed if it could recover the Malvinas. 
When news of the invasion reached Buenos Aires, the crowds went wild. The military regime's record of violent repression, the economic crisis, all were forgotten overnight. The national dream of reoccupying the Malvinas had been realized. ¿De dónde sos? Este, soy de la provincia del Chaco, estoy haciendo el servicio militar en Corrientes. ¿Acaban de llegar? No, llegamos a, ayer a la tarde. ¿Esto era lo que ustedes imaginaban? Nos imaginábamos un clima frío eh, y algo inhóspito. Y, y estamos aquí para defender la patria. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, sir. The House meets this Saturday to respond to a situation of great gravity. We are here because for the first time for many years, British sovereign territory has been invaded by a foreign power. She stood her ground and she decided that it was time to fight back. Ahí se ve el avión atacante. Pasa, se pierde hacia la derecha. Otro avión más. Canberra, large, white and obvious, made an inviting target. Auckland Islanders, stoical, undemonstrative people, greeted their liberators in a practical manner by repairing the flagpole. And a little self-consciously, a Union Jack was raised. Tuesday, 15th of June, it was difficult to accept in those first daylight hours, looking at the state of Port Stanley, that the Argentines had been here for less than three months and that the British landing was less than a month ago. Stanley looked and felt as if it had been at war so much longer. And it was obvious from what they'd brought with them that the Argentines thought they'd come to stay, even to the point of renaming streets and buildings in Spanish for the convenience of their troops. The government had urged the people to turn out for General Leopoldo Galtieri's first post-war appearance. He never made it. The crowd came to the presidential palace, but angrily, in no mood to listen. There were 10,000 in the square, many chanting for an end to the military government. Coins were hurled at police and at the Argentine press. Some in the crowd screamed that lies had been told repeatedly about progress in the war. There were arrests and beatings. Then, with guns that fired tear gas and plastic bullets, the police opened fire. Unlike some later wars, there was a pretty solid British consensus that this one had been worth fighting. There had been unprovoked aggression by a fairly nasty regime, which paid the price of failure. Argentina got its democracy back, but Mrs. Thatcher benefited too, of course. When I was looking through the different plane wreckages, I came across this ejection seat that saved this Argentinian pilot's life. And it said that it was made in England. At that point, I kind of realized that how ridiculous this all was. This dictator sent thousands of conscripted soldiers into uh, a place they didn't know about and convinced them that this was good for the country. And I don't really know what the, the moral of this story is because 
you know, it's such a bizarre war between nations that really have no business fighting each other to begin with. And if there's one thing that I have learned is that don't don't piss off the British because they'll come after you. Yeah.